The gaming industry is heavily entrenched in the Western culture war, driven by neo-Puritans that all resemble creatures from the island of Dr. Moreau. They're easy to spot by their BMI and propensity for using manic panic hair dye. The Western game journalists are also in the mix, many of whom are French class humans. One firing away from bagging groceries or working the pole, they are often extremely unattractive and unjustly smug for their physical and mental shortcomings. That can be best described as dark side Phil syndrome, where everything you do is right, nothing you do is wrong, and the events of the past are open to interpretation. Yours specifically. And anyone that questions you is a I mentally deranged correct. detractor. He laughs at It's a Gundam. He thinks it's funny. Ha ha ha, that's funny. He loves It's a Gundam. Ha ha ha. Mentioning It's a Gundam. Ha ha ha. With Stellar Blade launching this month and hitting number one on the PlayStation stores around the globe, I didn't even know that. Stellar Blade is currently number one for the pre-orders in the PlayStation Store. Looking like sales are coming in hot. That PlayStation 5 demo is pushing units. Apparently the game is good. Much to the chagrin of game journalists. Stellar Blade has led to so much discourse. Most of it is pointless at this point. And the game has fast become another figurehead in a terminally online proxy war that we're now starting to call Gamergate 2.0. Kotaku's favorite Spurg did another interview with a black podcaster that no one cares about, ironically. She tends to go on these shows because the hosts are so obsequious, it's pathetic. He has one of those channels that gets featured in the Game Awards because DEI exists. And I'm a minority, and I'm calling it like I see it. What's good, Chicago? What the deal be? This is Khalif Adams here in full effect, rocking with y'all of the Spawn Me podcast, the premier podcast spotlighting people of color in the video game industry. I think when you have those really seminal moments within culture and within the world, where you see something that throws you, you know, you just don't know what to do. You feel confused, you feel upset, you feel hurt. But the thing that I can do and put out into the world is a show. I know that things right now are very, very difficult. I know that things are all over the place in lots of different ways. It's scary, man. I mean, it's, that's just, there's no other way to put it. It is scary to be black in this country today. I'm a black mom, so I'm scared. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Little dude literally went from asking for money and sponsorships to keep his dying show afloat to then talking about racism when someone calls him out. What the hell is this? You can't be a victim and successful at the same time. That's some DSP level logic. On top of that, from what I understand, this show is also kind of subsidized by the show Kind of Funny. So it makes sense because his view counts can barely get over 500 views a video. There's no money in this. To be real with you, after watching his podcast with Alyssa, whatever her name is, I will tell you that my dog's farts have more of a cultural impact and a lasting impression on you than this dude's podcast ever will. And ironically, this show has been going on for 10 years. That's just sad. Again, blackness is a spectrum. I talked about this on my Twitter feed the other day, but I came across this tweet and it really did kind of sum up the reason why someone might not want you in this space if you are in a place that's looking to have progressive thought. And it was this one, cause I want DEI to die. The version of black that you are is your sh That's the version. Yeah. You're, not, you're just a shit person. You're just a whack ass person. No wonder he's at GDC begging for funding and Twitter. Oy vey. Anyway. It's okay. Yeah, and I mean like, okay, come through Hot Topic outfit. Like, yeah, I'm really excited to listen to what you might have to say about anything. Um, Alyssa pretends that she doesn't know who anyone is, while also taking a steaming dump on Gothic for her fashion choices, while Alyssa herself dead ass has similar taste and style. It's the same five people who bring these kinds of people on a podcast. So it's like what? A man who never shows his face, but has a cartoon Avi, a guy who has a baseball cap permanently glued to his head. Craig from Side Squallers was baseball cap man. A girl who hasn't brushed her hair since Jesus came back and who loves him more than anything in the world, who does nothing but say slurs online and eat butter. Happy Easter. And these are your soldiers? Smaller YouTube channels, oh wait, I think Reforged Gaming is bigger than Spawn on me. Reforged Gaming is making the rounds as well. Normally I leave beating up the 
console gaming YouTube channels to Fritanga, but I'll make an exception this time. There's nothing wrong with somebody saying, man, can we kind of move away from some of this stuff? This is getting a little crazy. Like, like when Alex from Digital Foundry said what he said, I agreed with him. It's like, it feels kind of dated. It's actually not flattering. I think it's so over the top. You know where everything has a question mark at the end of it? With an upward inflection? If you're agreeing with Alex from Digital Foundry about Stellar Blade when it was first previewed, during this Sony state of play, bro. He's gay! I think it's so over the top that it's almost humorous. Like the way that she jiggles and the way that she moves. Like, it's not flattering. It looks absurd. If you've ever been... Not to be crass, but it's like, that's not what it even, that's not what any of that looks like. When Stellar Blade was shown, I looked at it and thought to myself, this seems cool. Then they showed off for Spoken literally right afterwards. And I thought to myself, this looks like trash. And it also has that hot black chick who stays signing up for failing project. Crazy. This is dead on arrival. And daddy Gundam was right again. How does he stay so base? Even the creator of God of War chimed in and he was immediately ratioed by Freitanga for being a hypocrite. I remember when God of War let you have three ways with women? While making it a mini game. I love how the game that's supposed to be for real men who love hot chicks and hate wokeness rewards them for pre-ordering of lots of clothes and accessories to play dress up. One could also argue that the costume designs have something for everyone because clearly women will buy this. My assistant loved the boss challenge mode outfits and a woman built like her could easily pull them off. Now, if you are built like a water buffalo, not so much. What else does David Jaffe have to say? Thank you for creating God of War. We love it, but with all due respect, the imagery portrayed in the game would be problematic in the world today. The mini games along with women was great, but it's kind of hypocritical for you to take this stance now. Exactly. What stance do you think I'm taking? You became woke. You seem to now oppose having beautiful women in video games. Not sure why you changed your view. Number one, I've always been woke. Two, I'm very happy there are over-the-top sexy women in video games, and I'm also happy there are women in video games that reflect less sexualized people. Yeah, I've always been woke. The defense line of an aging Howard Stern, how fitting. The edgelords of the past are the neo-puritans of tomorrow. How ironic. The savvy artist questioned him and got no reply. It's to be expected. A woman challenging him cannot be so easily shrugged off with the, oh, incel or chud remarks. Why are you making so many tweets about a game you seem to not plan on playing? Could you please tell me how it's for real men? Have you ever seen outfit selections in a game before? Are you aware women enjoy these types of games too? Sorry, savvy artist, uh, you chud. <laughs> Have you seen a woman? Oh, good lord. The IGN journalist from France is back again. He gave a very odd apology, but then he turned it into a red herring. Oi vey. It's been translated by Topeak899. Yes, I have no problem. Go tell that to women who are hit, bubbled, and denigrated. Who self-delete because they can't live up to these fictional standards expected by men. The problem is not the design itself except that it sucks compared to others. But hey, that doesn't matter. But the percentage of males who will only want this type of fictional body in reality, obviously, we understand that this does not shock people who think that women are objects who must obey and be beaten. <laughs> this design makes us sigh and roll our eyes and we laugh at anyone who needs it, man or woman. Dude, I'm not even reading any more of this. It's just stupid. Here we go. Let's just do some statistics real quick off the top of Daddy Gundam's head. You can Google yourself. Number one, men bubble themselves at the rate three times more than women. Two, homelessness. Only one out of four homeless people are women. Think about that too. If you look at Calvin Klein underwear ads, they now heavily feature women that are overweight, prominently. While male models, unless they're trans, have to be peak human condition. Shame on you, Frenchie. Here's another statistic. 61% of bisexual women and 44% of lesbian women surveyed in 2013 report some type of intimate partner violence compared to 33% heterosexual women. Ah, you are more likely to get smacked up in a lesbian relationship than by a dude in a heterosexual relationship, which explains why lesbian divorce rates are at 75%.
damn the male gamers for wanting to play Stellar Blade, they did. In the wake of the overarching shadow cast by Stellar Blade on the Western progressive gaming industry, Microsoft's new Gaming for Everyone product inclusion framework was launched. It was archived by my boy from Taiwan, Lyle. This is the song that doesn't end. It's been like 10 years and they're still complaining about video game boobs. Are you reinforcing a negative gender stereotype? Are you unnecessarily introducing gender and gender barriers into your code or design? Uh-oh, better add those Zzer pronouns, little mister. Are you creating playable female characters that are equal in skill and ability to their male peers? Yeah, tell that to the swimming team that lost to Leah Thompson. <laughs> Zing! Are your female characters equipped with clothing and armor that fits their tasks? Do they have exaggerated body proportions? Are they desirable? Do they look like women? Are you a toxic video game creator? Gina Davis Institute is cited as the source here too. This chick's been busy. They released a report filled with some utterly insane stuff back in 2021. Got a little bit of pushback online, but not much. Looks like the industry ate it up. This is where Lyle's years of keeping track of all this progressive nonsense comes in handy for the rest of us. While we were ignorant of what was going on and how deep it is and how far back it goes, Lyle has receipts so that we can now wake up to a new nightmare in 2024. This is gonna be a dark decade. When it comes to violence in video games, a recent experimental study finds that boys are more likely than girls to identify with game characters. And players of violent only games are more likely to identify with game characters. Video game play is also associated with higher rates of aggression and violence for boys and men, as well as decreasing empathy towards others. Yeah, that's why everybody's complaining that men don't want to bother dating women and they don't even want to leave their house to interact with other people. How is the violence happening if the men are shutting themselves off and locking themselves in houses to escape into video games? How does that work? Here's another stupid one. An example of benevolent sexism is the belief that men must protect women or the romanticizing of caretaker roles for women. Well, there you go. If you want to protect the woman you love, or a woman being attacked on a subway, for instance. Sorry, pal, you're a sexist pig. You can't win with feminism. It's a whacked out belief system that leads to social and moral decay. Prove me wrong. This rabbit hole is deep and I may dive into it later, but not today because this woman's worldview is being taken seriously by many major gaming publishers. Among them is Blizzard, which is probably why Tracer no longer has an ass and every other character is now alphabet soup. The team is now so diverse they can't complete the single player mode that was pretty much the flagship thing for Overwatch 2. But they can sell you some skins and give you some gay fan fiction. What do you say, pal? Buy the battle pass now. There are studies that prove Gina wrong, but who's going to read those when you can listen to her and get some sweet ESG money or credits? So this is the culture war. What a stupid time.